What's up guys, Video Information here, and today we're going to be covering Safra Katz for the series Getting to Know Our CEOs. So this is going to be the story of Safra A. Katz. Our story begins with two parents, Judith and Leonard, in Holland, Israel. The year is 1961, and on December 1st, Safra A. Katz is born. Judith, a Holocaust survivor, and Leonard, an immigrant from Romania, longed for a better life. In 1967, the family moved to Brookline, Massachusetts, and at the peak of their careers, Judith worked as a speech therapist in public schools around the Boston area. Meanwhile, Leonard worked as a nuclear physicist at MIT before serving as a chairman on the physics department at MIT. Safra would spend the rest of her early life in Brookline. Graduating from Brookline High School in 1979, she would decide to attend the University of Pennsylvania, where Safra earned a bachelor's degree from the Wharton School in 1983. She'd also attend the University of Pennsylvania Law School, where she'd earn a law degree in 1986 and subsequently earn a JD at Harvard Law School. Despite earning her law degree in the early 90s, Katz decided to work on Wall Street as an investment banker, a decision that would change her life. In a 2005 interview, she stated, My best decision was to go to Wall Street over law. I learned a lot and focused on the expanding software industry at a time when the independent software industry was just beginning. This ultimately brought me to Oracle. The banking firm she chose on Wall Street was Donaldson, Lofkin, and Generate. She worked as a banker before becoming a senior vice president from January 1994 to February 1997. Katz then requested a transfer to Silicon Valley. There she served as managing director from February 1997 to March 1999. One month later, she joined Oracle Corporation, April 1999, and she quickly climbed, joining the board of directors on October 2001 before becoming president in early 2004. 2005 would be a big year for Safra, not just because she was credited with driving Oracle's efforts to acquire software rival PeopleSoft in a $10.3 billion buyout, but also because she would start her near four-year term as CFO, a position she'd later keep from 2011 till this day. Let's rewind back one year now to 2010, when Mark Hurd would join Katz and the two would become co-presidents. In 2009, Katz was ranked the 12th and 16th most powerful woman in business by Fortune and Forbes. However, in 2014, she'd fall to 24th in both magazines, which is a little surprising because on September 18, 2014, Larry Ellison stepped down as CEO. In response, Oracle appointed Safra Katz and Mark Hurd as co-CEOs. Some other positions of Safra are serving as director of HSBC Group from 2008 to 2015 and a consistent lecturer in accounting at the Stanford Graduate School of Business. After the election of Donald Trump, Katz was one of several high-profile CEOs along with Tim Cook, Charles Sandberg, and Jeff Bezos invited to talk with the president about potentially taking up a position in the incoming administration. According to Bloomberg, she was considered for the post of U.S. Trade Representative or Director of National Intelligence. Nevertheless, she served on the transition team for a 72- to 78-day period starting December 15, 2016 onward while of course still serving as co-CEO of Oracle. During the 2018 election cycle, Safra donated over $150,000 to Republican-aligned groups and individuals, one of which was Congressman Devin Nunes. On October 18, 2019, just over a month ago, tragedy would strike. Co-CEO Mark Hurd died of an undisclosed illness. However, it is known he was already on medical leave. So I guess it wasn't that surprising, but... How could a death not be surprising? On November 19, 2019, Oracle released a statement saying Safra Katz will remain the sole CEO until a new executive is trained and groomed into the next co-CEO. It's clear Oracle believes two heads are better than one. I'd like to end this story with a message to all women from Safra herself. In a 2006 Women High Tech Coalition event, I'm not sure what the direct question was, but her answer was... You have to be better. You have to work harder. Work longer. Be louder. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you feel like you know Safra A. Katz a whole lot better. I sure do. She's a very powerful and dominating presence, that's for sure. Despite the fact that she doesn't like to be written about and she avoids the spotlight, she's a very hard worker and she makes me think of Will Smith. There's no way you're going to outwork me. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Feed your information out and enjoy your day.